hope everything's going well. I know last time we talked, I got up to when I was about 22 with my trauma. And that is when I left my relationship of seven years where I was in a monogamous relationship. And of course, um, so I was in that relationship for seven years. It was not very healthy. It was very uncomfortable for me because I'm a polyamorous, pansexual, non-binary, genderqueer person. And even though at that time I didn't know I was genderqueer, it was very uncomfortable for me to exist in the idea of being just female and straight and monogamous. It was all things I was very uncomfortable with. By the end of our relationship, my partner had caused me to have a miscarriage by punching me in the stomach, um, had raped me on multiple occasions, um, though I may not say rape, but it was more coerced because I was just agreeing to have sex because I didn't want any more trauma or fighting or arguing. Um, actually, interesting story with rape before he and I broke up, or right before I broke up with him, was six, four months? It was four months before I broke up with him that I tried to leave him when I went to visit him at his graduate school. And we got into this big physical and emotional altercation. His roommate overheard everything, and during that duration of time, I had homicidal thoughts. Um, he confused them for suicidal thoughts, and he threatened to have me institutionalized. During that fight, um, I almost ran out in freezing cold weather in Massachusetts in nothing but my underwear because I wanted nothing to do with him. I didn't want to be in that situation. Um, he cried that night and basically guilt tripped me until I went home two days later. Um, luckily, the rest of our relationship remained long distance. I didn't go back to Massachusetts to visit him. He did not come back to where I was living at the time, Pennsylvania, um, in the last four months of our relationship. And at July 2012 is when I left him, and it was after cutting my hair, which I had grown out for the duration of seven years. My hair was down here. It was strawberry blonde, um, more like a golden red. Um, I, I am a natural ginger. This is my natural color right now, um, so I truly am a ginger. Um, just when I was younger, it was more blonde, like blonde and gold instead of red. Now it's more red than gold. Um, yeah, so I cut my hair. I dyed it this like light auburn, and I called him up via Skype to show him my haircut, and um, I broke up with him on that phone call. Anyone who's ever done that. No, it sucks for the person who's being broken up with. I've been broken up with over the phone before. Um, it led to a crazy conversation between him and I. Uh, with that conversation, he threatened to kill himself. He threatened all sorts of things when I broke up with him. Um, shortly after I got off the phone with him, I went and I spoke with his mother informed her everything that's going on, informed her about why I left him and all the abuse leading up to the breakup, and she was extraordinarily supportive, which I was surprised at. Um, I shouldn't have been as surprised as I was, but I was, and she ended up being one of my biggest allies after the breakup. Uh, she and I remained in contact for a good four or five years after the breakup, and then I just, I couldn't stand hearing his name anymore um even though to me she had told me that she had essentially let him go and it was
was it was a very interesting relationship. Um, it was also like it, it was a very turbulent relationship between him and his mother. So I left that relationship, and another part of that was I was actually cheating on him during the last year of our relationship, and I'm not proud of it. Um, I'm not proud of it at all. So I realized if I hadn't cheated on him, I probably would have stayed in the relationship because I didn't have anyone. I had friends telling me to leave the relationship, but the way they did it wasn't nearly as convincing as the person I was cheating on him with was, which is really bad. <laughs> I know it's really bad. It sounds terrible. And it turns out the person I was cheating him with was just as manipulative and just as abusive. It was not a good thing and I stayed with him for another three years after after I left my first abusive relationship. Um, I did briefly mention the relationship that I had with a guy after um, and that was with someone who was a alcoholic and every time he got drunk, he would be verbally and physically abusive, and he would have no memory of it. He would be blackout drunk and have no memory of what he did to me. It was very frustrating. And during this time, I was drinking prolifically. I drank a lot, a whole lot. Um, and that would continue for many years. Um, every group I hung out with, we were either Drinking, smoking pot, um, sleeping with people we shouldn't be sleeping with. Um, and I would continually go back to that one partner that I cheated on my seven year relationship with. I went back to him towards the end of my relationship with the alcoholic. And the interesting thing is, um, I was in an open relationship with um, my alcoholic ex. And we had a role, like we could sleep with anybody so long as we were telling each other about it. Turns out he cheated on me. He slept with someone and didn't tell me. And which is fair because I ended up sleeping with someone and not telling him either because lo and behold, the same guy that all my relationships um, struggle with, even to this day, struggle with, this person is still in the background. Um, because they were so prolifically in my life from the age of 14 to 25 and came back briefly at um, 30, <laughs> very briefly back at 30. And I am struggling really hard to keep that person in my life because I recognize nothing could, could ever come out of that relationship. Um, with that, I want to say this to anyone who's experienced any form of abuse. I recognize that it's difficult to leave. I recognize that when you're in the moment, you think the person's going to change. You think that it's not as bad as you think it is. Um, I recognize the power that these people have over you and the struggle it is to get to a place where you feel like you actually have a voice and where your voice actually matters. I want you to know it does. You matter. Your voice matters. These people who wrest control from you do not deserve your attention, do not deserve the time of day that we give them. If they're not actively trying to make themselves a better person, nothing you can say or do will make them become any better. Whatever behaviors that they are exhibiting now, or showing you now is who they are until they choose to be someone different. Um, I very much recognize that. I used to want to save people. I still want to save people. I want to protect people who cannot protect themselves. And that led me down the path of constantly finding people who needed help. And it was help that they didn't need or want or recognize that maybe they should consider. With that being said, learning to protect yourself 
is integral in breaking these patterns. Learning that your safety, your health, your mental health means more than the control they have over you. It means more than anything else. Honestly, I, I know it's hard to think about that. Hard to see the value in yourself when you're in the middle of a abusive relationship. It's hard to see your value because that's the point. They don't want you to feel like you're valuable. They don't want you to feel like you have a voice in what's going on. They want you to feel trapped and that they're the only person you can rely on. They'll do it financially, they'll do it emotionally, they'll do it physically. Anything to make you feel like you're alone. All my abusers did that. <laughs> I'm being 100% serious. All of them to some degree found some way to get into my head and made me feel isolated. And made me feel like my friends didn't actually love me. That they weren't looking out for me. That they were the only people who could look out for me. And let me just give a big shout out to all of my friends who have made it this far with me in my life. Because I was a shitty friend in, those situ in, in that situation particularly, especially when I was with the guy I was with since I was 14. I was not a good friend because I was so isolated. I didn't know any better. And um, sorry, I'm about to start crying. Um, I didn't know any better. Uh, I'll own it to that. I didn't know any better. So, so many people were telling me and reminding me that I was loved, that I was valued, that I had friends, that I have family who cares about me. You don't hear that when you're in the thrall of an abusive relationship. You don't hear it. They could be screaming it at you. They could be yelling it at you. They could be making divisive um, comments towards you to try and make you realize these people are terrible. Which, they're not necessarily terrible, they're going through their own problems, and they're just taking it on you. They're using the number one defense mechanism, and that's um, projection. Most abusers don't recognize it, that they're projecting on you. Um, some may have underlying personality disorders, like narcissistic personality disorder, though only 1% of the population has narcissistic personality disorder. In our day and age, more people are exhibiting narcissistic traits and some can be for protection some can be for whatever job you do um but it's narcissism can be so detrimental if you're caught in the thrall of it and they need help they really need help but they're not willing to see past their perfectionist ways to seek help and you can't help them. It's not your job. It's not your place. Um, be a parent or a partner or a friend. Unless they ask you for help and they exhibit the actual desire to want to change, there is nothing you can do to change these people. Nothing. Nothing. I know that's hard to hear. Realizing that myself. Coming to terms with that myself, after all the years of abuse that I went through and trying to find some reason to validate what I went through and having to come to terms with the fact that there was nothing I could do was one of the most painful realizations I've ever come to in my life. And also realizing that it's not my job to change anyone was another hard one to come to. Because it's just like, I want to help people. I want to help you grow. I want to make you be a better person. I want you to hit your goals. I want you to make it where you want to make it in life. I want you to be who you want to be. And for anyone listening and watching this, 
I hope this can help you understand what it's like from beginning, middle to end and continuation of your journey. Because that's that's what it is. It is your journey still continues after you leave and after they leave you. So um, I think that's enough for today. Um, this was a hard one for me. I do have some goals this week, and that is to film two more YouTube clips, three more sexy clips, and three photo shoots. Um, and I also want to start journaling more. And um, hey, <laughs> if you made it to the end of this, I'm very glad. And Please tell me what your goals are for this week. I know this is a hard week. Um, just, just put your goals below. I'm proud of you. I love you. And uh, I'll see you next week. Remember, go out there. Spread some love. I'm sending you all the love. Make someone happy today. Make yourself happy today. Go drink some water. Remember, I'm proud of you. You're amazing and you are loved.